The extinction rate for quiet places vastly exceeds species rate. In 1984, after I had already been recording nature for several years, I had identified in Washington State 21 places that I considered to be quiet places. The definition of that for me was the playing time of a, of a a seven and a half inch Nagra reel of quarter inch tape. It meant that I could make an entire recording without any human noise intrusion. There were 21 places at that time. And by the early 90s, only three of those places were made. Okay, Olympic National Park is one of them. The other two I keep secret for reasons that if we can't preserve Olympic Park through this recognition, perhaps its own anonymity is its only protection at this point. So there are less than a dozen um, undecided in the entire lower 48 United States. There are less than a dozen, possibly less than 10, that are quiet places. One square inch um, is a very simple idea. And now, of course, it's more than an idea. It's the idea that, well, if a jet, if a single jet can pass over a national park and for that moment in time obliterate silence, okay, in its passing, well, what happens if instead of noise, we talk about quiet? If we can maintain one point of land, one square inch, in quiet, doesn't that have the same effect of making sure that there aren't noise intrusions, there isn't noisy activity for dozens of miles in every direction? Because one square inch affects 1,000 square miles. And I know that sounds like an incredible exaggeration, but it isn't because I have recorded noise from over 20 miles away so that if you do the math, if you really try to protect just one square inch, you actually wind up managing a huge area all around it. And that's what I'm attempting to do here at Olympic National Park. 